that configuration code, which will be generated for you by the MHC after you've made those selections, uh, is placed into a set of about a half of files. These, these four that I'm showing you here are sort of the key files that uh, we want to talk about today. The static definitions for things like, um, you know, buffer sizes, what frequency you're running at, those, you know, pound-defined sort of definitions that, you'll, that a library will need in order to make those selections, build those selections into it, those are all defined in the system config.h. Uh, things that uh, are possibly different from one instance of a peripheral to another uh, that have to be passed into the library as it's, as it's initialized, um, those are defined in a file called system initialize.c uh, along with your, uh, you know, any of your other initialization parameters like the processor configuration bits that actually take up space in, in Flash. Um, that file, its primary purpose then, other than to have those definitions, is to implement the function sysinitialize. Now you can see in the bottom left corner of this slide we have um, the main function. And that shows that sort of simple super loop environment that I was talking about at the beginning. Uh, sysinitialize is the first function called when after you know the seal of the compiler has, has uh, initialized the variables and such and, and you've landed in, in the main function. Uh, the purpose of sysinitialize is to then go out and call the initialize function for every library that you've selected to be put into your system, pass in its initialization data, and ensure that it's in its initial state. It's ready to operate at that point, but it's not running yet. Then, back in main, you'll drop into the top system level super loop, uh, which simply loops continuously calling the system tasks function, sysTasks. That function is implemented in systemTasks.c file. And the purpose of that function is to then call the state machine function or the tasks functions for any libraries that you've configured to be in your system. That continues running in indefinitely, and that's how your polled environment continues to run in uh, uh, an infinite harmony application. We'll take a look at that in, in a little more detail in a second and see how the other configurations are just variations of this. Um, anything, one thing I want you to see here is that the, the system interrupt.c file, we separate that out to contain the, uh, the basically the vector functions for uh, every processor because they're different from one processor to another. Um, so they're not built into the libraries. They're part of this set of configuration code generated again by the MHC so that any libraries that are run interrupt-driven uh, can be called from their appropriate ISRs.